Okay, here here we go. A couple things. I got a couple goals today. One, I first of all want to review finding inverses and solving. But that, that's kind of boring, okay? But you know, we need to do that. So, because what I'd like to do is I'd like to have a quiz um, on, on two things, Kramer's rule and uh, solving with inverses. Um, I originally thought tomorrow, but um, what, what do you guys have going on tomorrow, Wednesday, quiz-wise? Have any idea? Because if you don't have a lot on Wednesday, let's just take the claim to Wednesday. Okay. Um, yeah, so we'll plan on 3.7, 3.8 quiz Wednesday. Okay. That'll allow those that were gone today to get kind of caught up a little bit and watch this. But here's the thing I'm most excited about. I want to show you guys something that um, that matrices can be used for that you've probably never thought about, which is cryptology. Okay, that's my main gist today, and it uses ma inverse matrices and matrices. Okay, so here's what I want to do. Let's start off with this one. Let's do on the on the um, very first page. Let's do um, worksheet. 4.4b, let's do number um, 16 together. Okay? So, so on a, you can even do this maybe on the bottom or a piece of scratch paper or your notes today or whatever. Well, let's go. just go ahead and solve this. Subtract 2, negative 2, 3, 1, equals... 8, 2, 6, negative 4. Okay. So, what we have is we get a matrix times a matrix minus a matrix gives me a matrix. So what we're trying to do is we're trying to find that X matrix that's missing out of this equation. Okay. So this is, this is a little bit, uh, this is a little bit uh, harder than what we've done before, but it's just a simple step uh, addition. Um, what should I do to, to start to solve this? Uh, add, add this matrix right here? Yeah, so use your logic that you've done before. We're going to go ahead and, since this is minus, we've got to peel both matrices, and the way the peel is minus is we're going to add 2, negative 2, 3, 1 to both sides. Okay. And so what I'm going to end up with is 6, 2, 4, negative 2 times some matrix gives me, let's add these together, 10, 0, 9, negative 3. Okay. So then this is where it's a review of what we've done before. What do we got to do? Inverse of which matrix? The one on the left. So this one, let's call this A, X, and B. So we're going to find the inverse of A. Okay. So remember, let's find our determinant. Negative 12, negative 8, negative 12, no, negative 12 minus 8 gives me negative 20. 1 over negative 20 times the funked up <coughs> matrix, which, what's my funked up matrix going to be? Mm. Oh yeah, negative 2, you're right. Negative 2, negative 4, and 6. Good. We take these two, we switch them, and these two, we make them the opposite. So now let's go ahead and that will be, and I'm just going to leave it in 20ths, 2 20ths, 2 20ths. Thanks for watching me, though. Good. 4 20ths and 6 20ths. So that right there, negative. Thank you. Good. So that right there, that's the inverse. So what do we got to do with that? Times it by B. Because if we go back up here, we're going to have to multiply this by the inverse on this side, this by the inverse on this side. Those wipe it out, and I just get my x equals. So I get x equals this times... 10, 0, 9, negative 3. Okay, go. 
This is old information. <laughs> Disappointed in myself. This one you're getting in fractions, aren't you? Get one tenth for the first one. And this one's going to be a two by two because I get twenty twentieths and eighteen twenty. Oh no, not one tenth. Should be thirty-eight twentieths, right? Are you getting 19 tenths for your first one? If you reduce it. Something feels wrong. But you know what? The bottom left one in the matrix is 14. No. This one here? No. 40 and negative 54. Oh, negative 14. You're right. Now, one thing you'll notice is look in your packet. There's answers are included as well. Yes. So I think if you look on the back of the other sheet, because um, we're on practice B, so look on your practice B. No, that's practice A. We're doing practice B. The, and actually, the same problem is on both worksheets, so that's why you might be like, you might be both right. Okay. Okay. So there we go. Okay, so that's how you would solve it, just a little bit more complex. Well, first of all, are you guys getting this or not? Yeah. I get so, I got some blank looks, so if you got questions, ask them. You all right? Okay. So that's something I'm going to expect you to be able to do. Okay. Um, if we wanted to take the time, what we could do is we could go back and plug it in and make sure that it works. I don't know about you, but I'm not really too enthused about plugging back in and showing that it works. Okay, I would be very interested in pulling out a computer and plugging it back in to see if it works. But um, you know, then it kind of defeats the purpose of doing this in our head either. Okay, so here's what I really want to get to today. This is cryptology. Okay, um, first of all, what is cryptology? No, no. It's yeah, it's secret writing. It's how to how to um, how to take a message or something and encode it so somebody else can't see what it is. Okay, so cryptology. Who would actually use cryptology? Spies. Military. Okay, military. Military, okay, okay. So, so bad people. <laughs> Treasure. Okay. Do you think you've ever been involved in something that uses cryptology? Yeah. Oh, you made up your own language. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, but one thing, cryptology is used. Guys, pay attention. Okay. I don't want to. Don't want to have to separate you like we're we're, we're little kids. Um, Anytime you order something online, you, your your credit card is encrypted. Okay, because otherwise, you know, as, as your um, information travels through the internet, it goes through one point to another point to another point to another point, and then all finally gets to the person who wants your credit card. At any point, they can 
there's they have, they have the a, a potential to see what you're sending. Okay, that's why they say you know don't send your social security your, your social security number via email or your credit card number via email because email's not really encrypted very well. But a lot of a lot of your credit cards, um, anything that you do is going to be encrypted somehow. <coughs> like if you ever see like HTTPS. That means it's secured, so it's somehow being encrypted in some way, shape, or form. <coughs> HTTP is, is just the where it's not, it doesn't have a secure connection. Okay. Um, so anyway, what I'm going to show you is one of the ba basic <coughs> ways, or actually one of the ways to do encryption. Um, you can do encryption like several different layers of encryption. You can do simple encryption. You could do really complex encryption. Okay. Like say, if I wanted to give you just like a little miniature encryption lecture here, if I said algebra, okay, what I could do, if we take our sheet that I asked you to pick up, um, what I could do is, is I could, let's say on each one of these, let's go ahead and add four um, letter places to it. So like A is a one, I change it to E. L, I go one, two, three, four, that become a P and G would become a K, and then E would become an I, and B would become a F, okay? And then R would become a 22, which is a V, and then A would be back to E. That'd be a very simple encryption. It does, it does, okay? So if you think about this, especially going back to World War II, encryption was huge. Encryption was huge because you know, the, the communication they had back then was very easily intercepted. Very easily intercepted. So the, the encryption they had was, was, um, was really pretty pivotal. Okay? And the encryption they used in World War II, they used one thing. The Germans used what's called the Enigma, Enigma machines. And the uh, Japanese, they used different color codes. And a very fr famous one is the purple code. Okay? Just a little... little um, little information about each one of these. The Japanese were using this purple code from way back in the late 30s, okay? And they didn't know it, but we broke it in like 1939. So everything that they <laughs> sent using purple code, we knew exactly what they were saying. And I've heard before that like the Battle of Midway, we received some, in, some very important information about that, um, about what was gonna happen using our mathematicians that were decoding these things because they sent it in the purple code, okay? And then Enigma was used by the Germans and they had this machine that you would type in letters and each time you typed a letter, these wheels would turn and the, and the actual convert, like this one was a simple plus four conversion. Every letter you typed in, that code would change every letter that you typed in. So what you had to have was you had this had to have this machine that you could type things into. Well, first of all, you'd, you'd, you'd set up this machine, all these wheels and dials up very specifically. And then, you know, so, so like if you got a message from somebody, the Germans would say, we're using code AFG or 128 or whatever, and they'd set up their little Enigma machine for that 128 and on the receiving end, they, they could type it in and it would decode it for them. Okay. Yeah, and one of, the th one of the ways that we were able to finally decode that is we actually captured one of the machines, okay? One of their encoding, decoding machines and all the code books that went with it, okay? Um, and, 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 yeah, yeah, so, so, um, so y you could see where the, the, uh, the, um, the encryption was really very important. Very, very important. Um, what? Yes. Yes, they wouldn't use the same one all the time. Okay? And, and, and actually, there's, there's, probably, there, there, there's probably a good video about Enigma, which I can find for you sometime. Um, but it's, you, you can see how, how critical it was to try and encode things so nobody else could understand it. And then, so if you think about it, what they had was, was they had like rooms full of people receiving codes that were encrypted and mathematicians are just trying to figure out 
How, what's this saying? What's this saying? National security is, is involved here. So what are they saying? So anyway, so I'm going to show you one way we can encrypt things in a way that you maybe never anticipated. So here's what I'd like to do. And I'm going to show this just for the people that are watching this at, um, uh, on YouTube. Here's the, here's the um, setup we're going to use. Very simple setup. But we can make this a lot more difficult is if I would make A worth 20 and B worth 20 five and C worth eight and then jumble all these up. You know what I mean? So what we're going to be doing is we're going to do a single layer encryption. <coughs> if you want to do a double layer encryption or a triple or a quadruple layer encryption, you can do it really very easily by switching up your letters or multiplying by a couple of matrices or doing something that was more complex. Yeah, you could do you could do letters and numbers as well. Yep. Yep. So anyway, so what we're going to do is we're going to just go ahead and start off with this code right here. Hello there. And I want you guys to do this as well. Hello. Hello, mate. Hello. Okay. And step one in this is what we're going to do is we are going to use this. I'm just, I'm just doing it this way so I can show on this. Okay. We're just going to go and encode. All, we're going to encode all this to number to numbers. That'll be our first layer of encryption. So H is eight, E is five, L's are both twelve, O is fifteen, and I'm going to put commas between these just because it might get a little bit confusing. Yeah. T is a twenty, H is an eight, E is a five. R is an 18, and then E again is a 5. Okay? So there's my list of numbers. So that already that's encrypted. It's the, it's the most simplest type of encryption ever, but it is encrypted. Okay? So now what we're going to do is we're really going to mess this up. So we're going to take this, and we're going to go ahead and do units of 2. And since there's an odd number, I'm just going to go ahead and put a 0 at the end. Okay, so what I'm doing is I'm making these each into a one by two matrix, making each two numbers into a one by two matrix. And then what we're going to do is we're going to pick a random matrix, and we're going to multiply each one of these by a random matrix. Well, I've picked the matrix because I've got something I want you guys to decode later on, and the matrix I've picked is four one six two. So here's going to be my matrix that I'm going to use over and over and over again. 4162. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and take this 85 and I'm going to multiply that by 4162. Help me out here. If I take 85 times my 46, what do I get? Mm, what? 72. So I should get um, 32, no, 62, right? 32 and 30 gives me 62. So my first one, that, my first one turns into a, a 62. So I'm going to put this 62 underneath the 8. I'm going to have to write small, you know what, I'm not going to put it underneath the 8. I'm just going to go ahead and go 62. Okay? And now my 8, 5 times the 1 and 2 gives me 8 and 10 gives me 18. So now what's happened is this 8 got turned into 62 and the 5 got turned into 18. Yippee ding dong. Well, let's do the same thing with 12 and 12. If I do the 12 and 12, I get 48 and 72. 48 and 72 gives me 120. And then 12 and 36, 12 and 24 gives me 36. And I'm going to stop right there for now. Now you can start to see the power of this encryption. Because right here, look at the original code we came up with. You can tell right here, there's two letters right next to each other that are the same. I can tell that this E is the same as this E, and that's the same as this E. So then what we could do is we, if, if we have a very simple encryption, we could probably figure this out pretty easily. Okay? If we had like a whole paragraph, I guarantee if we put our minds together, we could figure it out. There's lots of T's, there's lots of E's, there's lots of S's. 
if there was a, uh, a, a space, you know, we could figure out what the letter A or letter I is. But look at this. This 12, that L got turned into 120. The next 12 got turned into 36. So right away, we're losing all of our characteristics that might be fairly obvious to the casual viewer. Okay? So here's what I want you to do. I'm going to ask you guys to continue this. So I want you to go ahead and, and do the whole thing. We go 15, 0, 28, 518, this, that, and the other. And then after you're done, we'll go ahead and check to make sure that you guys are all on the, all on the right page. And remember that if we had a, a computer that was doing this for us, it would go a lot faster. Okay, so you could see how um, you could just send somebody a Microsoft Excel spreadsheet, and then you could just go ahead and and um, have it do some things for you once you type in the inverse matrix. Big here, aren't they? <coughs> Encryption I find very interesting because it's a great, great use of mathematics. Okay. Once you're done, what I'd like you to do is double check mine. And you can compare yours and mine just to see if we're on the same, see if we're getting the hang of it correctly. Right? Okay. So, so here's what you get. Here's what you got to imagine. Let's say this is this is matrix number 131 or 1301 in our flip book of different matrices. Okay, so if you on the receiving end, all they'd have to do is just go one three zero one, and then you would know. Okay, so I'll get to my flip book of matrices, and they've got the matrix four one six two. So that tells you what matrix they've multiplied everything by. And the only people that can encode this, or that can decode it, I mean, would be the people with your little flip book of matrices. Okay, so then that becomes very valuable to you know, to capture that flip book of matrices or something like that. Okay? So I guess the question becomes, if you're on the receiving end, how do you get this figured out? You have to, you have to well, let's say you have the book. There's no division matrices. Well, there's no division matrices, so... No. Oh, come on, what have we been working on? Inverse. We'll multiply by the inverse. So if we would find the inverse of this matrix, so if this is my A, let's go ahead and find the inverse. Go ahead. Practice that skill for me real quick. Because I took um, this oh, one. Oh, because this is my we yeah, one divided by my determinant. Eight, six, eight minus six. Mm -hmm. Got your inverse right. So then, how are we going to do this? What do we do? Yeah, we got my inverse. Yippee ding dong. Now, what do I do with that inverse? Well, you'll take this sixty-two eighteen, and we're going to multiply it like this. And then what we get is 62 minus 48. Uh oh. 62 minus, I'm sorry. Whoa. 
Did we screw up something? Did I? Is three times eight? Oh, 54. 62 minus 54 gives me eight. And then I've got negative one half on here, so that's negative 31 and 36 gives me five. Does that eight five look familiar? No. Yeah, that's what we started with. Yay! Okay. So, so now I've given you a way that if you want to uh, communicate with your friends and not have your parents know what you're saying, well, I suppose you could you could do this. And if you do it, I just tried it on my GeoGebra. Works awesome. Works great. So here's what I want you to do. Using that inverse matrix, I've got something I want to decode. Want you guys to decode. Get help? No, <laughs> not going to be get help. <laughs> um, here you go. No, it, it's the same matrix. It's the same <laughs> matrix. 38, 10, 160, 48, 100. 25, 128, 36, 88, 29, 158, 49. You'll get it. You'll probably get it figured out by this point. Okay. No, no. <laughs> no, I know. I know. 25, 142, 40. Oh, uh, like I said, you'll get this figured out way before you get to the end. Okay? So here's here's the deal. How do we do this? You split it up into one by two matrices, and since we're using the same matrix to decode, we're on page 1301 of our flip book again. Okay. Um, go ahead. Start decoding. <coughs> using the same matrix. Starts with an eight. The excitement's building. Kind of a boring little deal, but um, you know, at, at least the riddle. Um, oh, it's a riddle. Well, it's not not necessarily a riddle. No, it's, it's just something. Riddle. It's just words. <laughs> What's up, dog? <laughs> no, <laughs> an eight and then a one. <laughs> yeah, isn't it amazing? I think it's cool. Yeah. Okay, so what I'm doing up, up above, I'm writing what, I, what I'm getting. I'm getting a negative 19 and a 20. From 38 and 10? Yeah, 10 times negative 1 half. So I get 38 times negative 1 half. No, no, no. Because remember, when I'm standing this up, my 38 is going to get taken times my negative 1 half. So that's where I got my negative 19. And my 10 gets taken times my 2. So I'm not writing the standing in that part. Mm -hmm. You still look kind of confused. Well, Thirty-eight. The first number right. Okay, because you took that times one and negative three. Yeah. So now I'll take thirty-eight times negative one half, okay. and then I get negative nineteen. Ten times two gives me twenty. Add them together. Okay. You, I'll tell you what. I, once you get done with like the first ten letters, uh, ten yeah. numbers, stop and convert them to letters. And I think you'll see what it is.
Uh oh. 150. I don't know. So get enough of it where you're convinced that that might be what it is. But isn't that kind of neat, though? And, and, and what's neat is, <laughs> is how would you ever figure that out just by looking at that string of numbers? If you didn't know the matrix, now if I wanted to make it more complicated, I could do this times a 4 by 4 matrix. Or I could use decimals in my matrices. Okay. And if I did four by four matrices, I would just do four letters at a time. Okay? Or, here, you want, really want, to, want your brain to explode? Check this out. We could, oh, stop what you're doing. Watch this. I could, this would be my first, okay, so going up here, this could have been our first step. And then you could multiply it again by like a three by three matrix. And then you could multiply it by a four by four matrix. You can do lots of different things, okay? So, so wow. Challenging stuff. <laughs> so, here, so here's what I want to do. Um, on 4.4, worksheet A, go to the second one, please. And I want you guys to have time to work on this. So I'm, I'm going to kind of zoom in on this so the people that are gone can see what we got going on. I want you to do 1 through 5. They can do maybe a screenshot and do some work. Or, or Alexa, can de you can deliver these to some people if you want. Okay. Then I want you to do 16 through 20. You know what? Let's just do um, <coughs> let's just do 16 and 20, not 16 through 20, because 18 and 20 are the same skill. 16 is two by twos, and this one would be a two by three. And then I want you to do 20 through 25. If you want to do 20 through 25, um, right now while it's fresh in your mind, that may not be a bad idea. That's a good question. I think I would want to know that. Well, I assume that you probably know who it is if you're communicating with them via matrices. It's too much work. Text me in regular language first. Then we'll talk. One of my um, well, 